and yes, we are recording. And um, the question for today is what is an eco village and how this eco village could serve the ecology, the innovations for the future innovation ecology, okay? And uh, my sense, I, I can try to find, I don't know what is an eco village. Uh, for me, it's a place where we really um, live as a community and uh, embrace the, the values of life and human development and go for um, the individual and collective well-being. And um, it's, it's more, uh, more a sensation inside me, not a definition, not a, a, an academic or a study or scholar definition. It's more my intuition about the issue. And um, in the context of how Eco Village could serve innovations, that, that I have a, 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 a strong opinion in, in that point. Because Eco Village are big projects, like the one Gil is doing in Abrigada. And they involve a lot of areas. They are a very complex project. And uh, if we manage to do several of this eco village we have the opportunity of bring together all these people that is working in several areas around the country in water in forest in permaculture or syntropic designing food networks uh, construction uh, energy um, human development community building you have a huge opportunity of doing that and i'm seeing that that is happening i know right now for seven or eight projects that are presented to municipalities in, in, in Portugal, uh, from north to south. And that could be a very interesting opportunity. The, the budget goes for something like 15 million to 30, mi to 30 million euros. And uh, that is a huge amount of money that uh, we could use for doing um, very interesting stuff in Portugal, going to this society uh, 4.0 uh, conception of, of uh, a way of living. And this is my perspective about the issue. Thank you. And I pass to Flip, what is an eco village to you and what is the importance that you see that eco village has in this innovation for the future thing? Yeah, so I, I just pasted on the chat what is kind of the official definition by Jen um about what is an eco village and, and i think what stands out for me is the idea of intentionality and uh the kind of consciousness in which you kind of design a human se a settlement uh, through a participatory process and with all of these dimensions as you were speaking um and again as mateo was saying and i also had the opportunity to visit many different eco villages in different parts of the world and seeing like from a couple of families to thousands of uh, people. You've got a huge diversity. Um, but I think these three or four key aspects are the most important ones. The idea of intentionality, the idea of a participatory process, uh, and the idea of, of, of a conscious uh, process of designing something that kind of serves us and serves the wider uh, ecosystem in which we inhabit. Uh, re regarding the role of what it could play, um, I like to think like in terms of an ecosystem and that somehow in Portugal uh, or in the world we're trying kind of to, we are trying to rebalance or re trying to find new balances of the urban and the rural areas. We're trying to find new ways to go into nature conservation processes. Uh, we're trying really to kind of find, yeah, new in, in interplays. And I think that co-housing uh, and all of these things play a role in this. And eco-villages uh, is an aggregating factor for a number of people. Uh, and that can also play a role in promoting a more balanced kind of society overall. Um, I, won't, I would not be too much attached to the concept of an eco-village. I know it's a kind of an aggregating concept. Um, but I'm not very much attached because it's so broad. It can mean so many things for so many different people um, that a lot, of, a lot of the times I like not to get too much attached uh, 
to it, like this is an eco village and that's not an eco village, that's uh, something else, that's a spiritual community and spiritual community is not an eco village because whatever. Um, so those debates, I think they are important when you are creating something so that you can get the sense more clear, but I'm not uh, nowadays getting too attached to, to that. But I do think that they're gonna play a role. Um, however, it's, it's one piece of the bigger puzzle and the bigger puzzle involves uh, smaller communities, which I might not consider themselves as a Nico village. I might just consider themselves a small, you know, rural community. Uh, some others might just be uh, kind of reconfiguring a traditional village into somehow uh, integrating more technology and a different conscious design. And they might not consider themselves a Nico village. And that's okay. Uh, so I, I think just one part of a bigger puzzle of this kind of transition to a more balanced society. Uh, so maybe I just st stop here and then we can uh, go with the conversation later. Who did I pass last time? Well, it doesn't matter. I can pass it to Ivan. Who, oh no, oh, yeah, it was Ivan because he was my neighbor. True. Thank you, uh, Philippe. Um, I think for me, the, the main factor about the Eco Village is whether it it finds a way to thrive or finds a way to, I don't want to use the word survive because a lot of marriages survive and people are very unhappy in them. I think more in terms of, um, or become at some point very unhappy in them, but I think more in terms of thriving in the sense of um, just being able to take challenges that come along and digest them and somehow learn, come wiser, progress, um, there has to be, I think, some type of process of, of um, being able to stay with discomfort, uh, of being able to digest problems um, uh, in a way that people don't uh, run away. People feel somehow uh, a reason to stay and, and participate in the process. Um, here in, in Tomar, I feel that we're creating a community and maybe community is one of the key aspects of, of the word um, Echo Village. The intentional part I'm not sure about because I always thought communities had to be intentional. People had to decide to somehow come together. And this young man, Mick Santos recently, who was doing his master's thesis for Schumacher, said that he was living up in Benfeta with uh, a community that's been created there called Arbor. I don't know if you would call it an Echo Village. I, I forget how he refers to it in his thesis that he felt that it was a non-intentional. These people were there and just somehow through osmosis, through educating their children together, through issues they faced when there were the fires in 2017, they just slowly somehow came together. The community became stronger and stronger and, and things began to emerge almost like a, a, a garden, you know, out of the, the ecosystem that was there. And that's another thing I see with what uh, Livia and Marco and some of you are doing is, Livia was saying to me, you know, I'm connecting people. I don't know what's going to come out of it, but I'm connecting them. So I'm creating this healthy um, ecosystem that will then give life to something. And I don't know what that something will be. Mm -hmm. And I pass to Bronwyn. Thank you. Thank you, um, Yvonne. Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm really struck by two things. Um, and I think the I mean, the community that works and thrives um, seems to uh, really be supported by people who who are asking the question who we, who who am I um, and you know what's my purpose what's the work to do so somehow in all the communities I've lived in I, I also lived as a Buddhist nun for two years in Burma and in South Africa in this bigger community. The, you know, the people who really were about finding out their purpose and who they are at a fundamental level um, tended to come together and um, work well. So I'm really enjoying this discussion and yeah, that's what I have to offer. And I pass to uh, Nuno. Thank you, Brown. Um... Yeah, I'm kind of resonate with the idea of, uh, of, of not getting strict on, on defini defining what an eco-village is. I'm more interested in 
you know, the exploration itself. One of the things I've been observing is, you know, there's, there's many so-called eco-villages, but not a lot that have sustained over a long time. And, and all of them have, you know, um, are leaving some contradictions and have to deal with them. And I guess what I'm interested in is in exploring, you know, those contradictions, exploring the tensions that come into place when people come together to live close by and, and to have a relationship with place. So there's a lot of things that we now are in a, in a kind of, a, I feel we are at the crossroads where as humans we understand that we need to evolve the way we live uh, and the way we inhabit places and, and places inhabit us. And I'm interested in that exploration, knowing that, you know, we, we, go, we are frail. So we're, we're going to fail and, and collapse in many aspects. And I'm, I'm interested in how to sustain uh, uh, um, uh, the purpose that bring people together over time and how to overcome those tensions and acknowledge them, accept, so really explore the challenges of being self-sufficient, um, having a culture that is alive and not like rigid or static that is trying to really be humble to what it means to bring a new culture of, um, that, that is regenerative in terms of human aspects and also natural aspects so that it's us as nature regenerating itself. And knowing that we are at, the, at, at this transition, so we still, embed, we still have deeply seated in, in, inside of us a lot of, of ways of thinking and, and habits from these old systems that we are trying to change. And just to be humbled with that and really work, work together, overcoming the difficulties. It's not going to be easy. We know we all have been involved in collective processes and we know how hard it is to really sustain that over time in a healthy way and I want to keep exploring that you know so really for me it's all about how also how myself as you know someone that kind of finds the call to be catalyzer weaver and really try to see what things we need to put in place how we can for instance learn with indigenous communities but at the same time look towards um, what, what we've went through as a society based on, you know, individualism or coming, coming to the, the discrimination of individual and collective, how we can now incorporate everything, integrate this into new, new possibilities for us and for the planet. So it feels there's a lot of things going on and I also feel it's important for us to, to kind of be intentional in terms of if we all drive, if we are all uh, driven not only by, you know, building a co-village and being part of one, but also nurturing the connection of this tissue, like looking at the territory as acupuncture points, eco-villages as acupuncture points of the territory where we are trying to heal the, the, the whole body of, of Portugal, let's say. I'm interested in how we can also raise the bar for us in terms of capabilities and capacity to support these efforts because I think there's more and more going to be a, a growth in people wanting to make this shift in many different ways, how we can support that and really have a kind of a, a blueprint of not, not like a, a, replicate, a, re, a replication model, but some, some instruments, some frameworks, some approaches that can help people to, to choose from that palette how they, they want to uh, build or develop their own, their own initiatives. So I'm also looking at not only my own interest in living in an eco-village and my kids growing up in an eco-village, but also how to work in these acupuncture points within the body of the, of the country. And that's, that's what I'm sitting with. And I pass mm -hmm. over to Gil. Yeah, thank you, Nuno, and, uh, and thank you also, everybody. I've been resonating and, and, and flowing. Um, yeah, for me, Echo Village, uh, at this moment, it's the place where I want to be in order for us to have these kind of conversations at lunchtime or dinner time. because, yes, because it happens. It doesn't need to be planned. 
So really having these meaningful life and meaningful conversations and, uh, and, and, and go, go deeper into them. Um, I see Echo Villages now as a kind of a living labs of, uh, of, um, uh, of bringing together different paradigms, the human in connection with, them, with themselves, with the other in nature, um, all these, uh, these uh, recapacitation. Um, and, 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 and I would see the, especially the intentional Echo Villages being made in order to ground and, and start building this uh, holistic way of living connected to place until until we have these, uh, like also Nuno was saying, the competences and the capabilities and the capacity to really understand not how to do, how to do agroecology only and put, uh, uh, solar panels and whatever, but to really go into how we think and how differently we have to think and the fact that we really start pursuing a culture of changing the way that we initiate our thoughts. So we're really into about why are we designing that way? Why are we thinking that this design works? And so always about going, going one step back. And, uh, and uh, I, I would find that helpful because we don't want everybody leaving all their places and start settling up eco villages in rural areas, whatever. I really feel that this is a step for us to really be, get and feel the, 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 the essence of what it is to, to become a, a human um, in, in this developmental path that humanity is going, which needs to go into a healthy state and then has everything that is alive. When it's healthy, it evolves. So for me, it's about the, having the, the questions about how can we heal and develop the capacities to live well today and together and in connection. And then when we are here, how this moves us forward. And by learning that, then also be at the service of, um, of, uh, of uh, uh, and share with people living elsewhere. So I, I would really like to go into and, and probably support villages to become fully alive as they are and neighborhoods and this and that. So to, I also feel that it's like a kind of a gym in a way. And, and I, I talk about myself. I mean, I'm not rooted anywhere, which, which is also a type of pain because some people lived in a place and they have the culture and the parents and grandparents and, and, and so on. So that this lineage is there. And I also feel that intentional um, uh, eco villages, they also lack a lot of that. You, people come from elsewhere grounding and of course, the place has a lot of energy, it has a lineage and so on, which is fine because I also want to get one. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about starting. Um, so, so uh, and regarding the benefits for I4F and the ecology and so on, it's, it's all these capacities and capabilities and, uh, uh, that will be developed. And, and remembering that when Echo Village in South or Center or North, whatever, they will be different because it's not about designing just the 12 dimensions and then if we have water and energy and whatever. Each place, it's unique. It, whether it's uh, because of geology or climate or culture or whatever, it's more towards probably primary production or, or knowledge transfer or spirituality or whatever. And, and, and so I, I also feel that, again, it is not the what, but what's behind driving all of this and how are we influenced by all of that and trying to understand the process in, in diverse places for us to start going into the the essence of the process because then we can also uh, understand how to do it in a in a city or in other places so that's what we mean jill find someone to pass please uh i thought i was the last but probably i'm not let me <laughs> Oh, by the way, I hope you don't mind. I'm just putting some questions that I kind of that kind of uh, coming as we're speaking on the on the chat uh, that we might want to pick it up uh, sooner or later. So Thank Jill, you, Philippe. So. You okay, can so choose. Matteo, yeah, Matteo Wahari, Thierry. You can okay, choose. Okay, then I go to Matteo. Thank you, Jill. Hmm. Uh, 
funny. It, it's it's hard for me to answer to that question. What is an eco village? Um, I think in a way I resonate with what Felipe was saying. Like it's it's everything. Like so many different, so so much diversity can be contained in what is an eco village. That that trying to define it, it feels like an insult to that diversity. And and I'm wondering how. Yeah, what are the, the, the common threads? And probably that definition that Jen gives is actually broad enough to include this diversity. And uh, so yeah, intellectually I don't I don't find it useful to 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 argue about what is an village. But I find it interesting in my heart to feel like what I feel when when I would invent uh the eco village if we want to call it like this where i wish to live and then there are all these elements that many of you mentioned jill especially now you were we were mentioning like meeting for a dinner and having this discussion because there is a, a common interest for certain values the values of regeneration the earth the gaia but not necessarily they equal everyone so even that diversity is contained within the coherency and yeah for example um felipe were saying like the certain uh, spiritual ashrams let's say are not really eco villages because of whatever reason and in a, in a way it, it makes sense to me i didn't know that but it makes sense because spiritual wise for me it's important to have also that diversity in an eco village and if there is a, a just the just one line then it's limited so uh, Somehow, like the, the word that comes into is diversity and care for for what is the earth and what is the place we live and how do we produce the thing we produce, how do we consume the thing we consume. But this is all part of this care. And why this is important for the uh, ecosystem of innovation for the future? Well, in a way, it's, it's, it's the place where many of the values that the society 4.0 is trying to to envision can come into concrete it's like really let's live it there's not just practices acupuncturally in in little sectors but no like let's put them all systemically together to work for real life yeah and uh, i think that's it <laughs> this is what i can produce for now so i guess i pass it to harry What is an eco village? Uh, like Gil was saying, like living labs uh, where we are learning how we can make, how we can be the change, how we can make a, a better place in the world uh, and so necessary on this moment. So, the focus on being sustainable and or we are completely sustainable or we are sustainable in one way and connected with other projects. So, we can produce one thing, another project can produce another thing and we can trade. So, I believe in these interconnected projects, Eco Village. And an eco village with different communities, every community with its own vision, but all co creating the global needs. So we make an alternative, alternative society that we can produce all that we need. So we don't depend on an outside system that doesn't work, that is not working, but we produce all that we need. So we make an alternative system that is more more sustainable, more focused on creating a better world. Uh, yeah, being the change we want to see uh, from the roots. So producing what we need, working on the human relationships, it's so important because we were so used to be alone individual lives. We were programmed to be 
individual, to be competitive. And we are getting out of that paradigm. So we work as a collective. And learning how we can live together in harmony with each other. So it's like this living, learning experiments, living labs. So, and yeah, we are learning a lot and, and that's making it a, a living learning. And no one has the right answer, but we all are learning and making like biodiverse system with different ways, different visions that are all important for the global change in the world. So, yeah, thank you. Thank you all for co-creating. Uh, who is missing? Thierry. So I pass to Thierry. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, a lot of has already been said. Uh, for me to summarize what is the eco village, I would say like for me two intentions are very important. Is like the eco part, so being uh, wor working towards sustainable society, and it's I guess it might be easier in a, with a small group of people than uh, with big cities. Um, and the second thing for me is is also kind of peaceful or or happy society. Um, community and I'm um, I became more realistic you know there's I, I sense there's always some kind of tension uh, kind of always 100% of the time being happy <laughs> maybe also doesn't work we, we grow by uh, by kind of tension um, and for me personally why I'm interested in in this also here is because um, uh, eco village is also an economic entity and what i started uh, realizing when i did uh, research uh, last year around the, the local currencies is that basically it can can be kind of a of a hub also eco village to a kind of a healthy economy and um i don't have to make a long story about it but i i guess if i summarize it with uh, that everybody in some way is kind of a slave of the the, the global economy and the, and, and, and the banks, uh, then how can we find a solution outside of that? And I know in Finthorn uh, Eco Village uh, for a long time, they've been doing research on it. They also have a, a local currency there and they have different uh, uh, initiatives also in the region. So I'm really interested to to find out. I, I, I see some some aspects uh, where it uh, might work very simply, because you know if you have eco village, you have more than just uh, two or four people in a house, so you can buy stuff together, and economically it makes it uh, cheaper. In, in uh, economics, they call it economies of scale. Uh, you get a discount or things like that, and if you work with these simple models, you you can um first of all get get your stuff cheaper and the second thing that uh, what i'm now looking into with uh, tamira is what they call community supported farming where basically uh, we start finding out okay what sustainable products uh, food do we really need and some of the things we know at the moment they're not produced in uh, in portugal uh, simply because it's uh, uh, you know, it's not economically interesting for the farmers, but if you just sit around with uh, with a decent amount of clients, uh, it becomes interesting. So that's that's one way where we can also, with these communities, these bigger groups, uh, get together and and really make the shift happening. So I'm really uh, really excited about it. And over here, you know, basically Tamira is about 200 people. Montesahaja is. Uh, like at the moment about 100 people plus the surrounding, so it would also be 200. So then you already have 400 people. If you have a couple of other groups around it, you easily get to, with a couple of food hubs, we have here about 1,000 people. And then it's really a, a good number to start producing your, your rice locally. And maybe we don't do it ourselves because we are not uh, the, the farmers, but then we make a deal with uh, with some farmers in the, in the Alentejo. I, I, uh, to to do this, 
And these are kind of building blocks I'm playing with. And um, after I give, before I give the microphone back, I, I had one question to everybody. Um, I wanted to get in touch with Finthorn with uh, their uh, group who's working on the eco, on the local currency. And I'm just wondering if, if people are interested in that. And we can just find out with them if they're willing to, to do kind of a masterclass with us or, or some a, a Zoom where, where they share their knowledge and their lessons. Because basically, you know, I'm just a student. I, <laughs> I'm just reading up on the web and, uh, and we just have to find out, okay, what's, what's working elsewhere and then pick our lessons for it and uh, uh, do it ourselves. So would people be interested in that? If I can just comment on that, uh, just directly, I've, I've lived in Finhorn for uh, a long time and I've been there uh, a lot of times and actually I was there studying the currency itself for my PhD and I, 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 can, I can tell you a lot about it uh, if you want because I met directly with everybody, I used the currency, I saw it. I would say it's not a great example of uh, an effective and efficient community currency by any standards. Um, and actually now the pandemic even showed it even actually not only for, for that, but showed very um, clearly that is not a great economic tool. They're not, they're not using it, the full potential of it. I think that there are other community currencies which are much more interesting from a design and impact perspective than the eco in Finhorn. But we can okay. speak about it more. Yeah, yeah. okay. Then we just have to... Uh... Thank you, yes, Thierry. Now. Thank you, Flip. And uh, yes, I suggest that you guys uh, uh, talk about that uh, in a different moment. And mm -hmm. Thierry, uh, saying, uh, listen to Flip, uh, if you feel the energy to organize that, please do and ask us mm -hmm. support in doing that, okay? Yeah. Uh, uh, and um, we will, I want also to say that we will have this year at least three learning journey to projects in Echo Village. Tamer is being planning for 20 pe people to stay there in a weekend. And I have a meeting with Peter next week to design that. We will do in the summer the learning journey to Idanya and to the projects that are running in Idanya. And we'll stay also there in the annual gathering of the Innovations for the Future. And we will do maybe in May a learning journey to complete uh, ECHO uh, neighborhood that is uh, emerging with the support of Livia and Centropaia and others in Lisbon, in mm -hmm. the city of Lisbon, inside the city of Lisbon. And uh, we will do that in, in, in this year, these three learning journeys. And yes, the, the main issue of this team in the Echo Village team in the Innovations for the Future is, is this, it's to connect, it's to uh, do this learning and, and sensing journeys and to bring the information to the table. And I want to give I noticed that just one of two and two of you talk about the importance of the Echo Village in this movement of innovation that is happening in Portugal. And I want to go deep in that question. We have more or less 20 to 25 minutes to do that. And um, I, I want to do an introduction here saying that some of us noticed that there was this thing happening in the, in the country projects are emerging in different contexts in all places in all municipalities with with different innovations and different uh, uh, perspectives of of what it means to be living together some of them are doing in education some of them are doing in health in property in money in energy in water in living settlements in uh, um, uh, places like clara lab or biovilla that there is a, a huge diversity of projects that is happening. Some are working in forests, some are working in gardeners or in permaculture, in production, in food networks, that there is a lot of diversity. And when we notice that, we notice that some patterns start to emerge. One of them is that the ones that we talk, thematic labs, and was the, the, the subject of our conversation last week, and others, is the what people call eco village people start calling ah we are doing the eco village of obrigada the eco village of sandia the eco village of spiralia the eco village of whatever and whatever yes that was one of the patterns that people were saying that was doing 
And it's why we are here talking about that. And the second pattern, we, we will talk that in the, after, uh, in the, in the lunchtime, it's, we call that legacies, but it, it's what we notice that some places have some similarities, like Biovilla has some similarities with Claralab, and Claralab has some similarities with Tenshi, and Tenshi has some similarities with uh, what Samer has as the School of Love and the, the facility project in time, and also with Gravito and with other places. And, we notice that patterns. We, not, we are not saying that our design patterns or that are okay. We are just seeing that we notice that. And let's put people together and talk a little bit about that because some of them really involve a lot of money. And I want to give you an example that happens in, a, in, a, in last year. Uh, 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 one of the technologies, social technologies that I appreciate uh, and I, I'm learning to do that came to Portugal last year. And the place where that happened was a, a commercial place, a new uh, uh, Airbnb thing. And uh, that, that event has more or less uh, five, um, 50 pessoas, 15 uh, people. And um, the movement of money will be more or less 1,000 1, euros, same uh, uh, euro, uh, 100 mil euros, um, 100,000 euros. And that money mainly goes to the, to the mainstream economy. And I, I make the question, I know all these projects, amazing projects in Portugal. Why didn't that money come to the right place like Bio Villa? Why didn't happen that? And why it's not happening? Why this money that are funding transformation, because I put my money there, why that is not going to places like Bio Villa or Universidade dos Valores or Clara Lab? And why the eco villages that are being built, the money is going to the, some of them are going to places that are in economy 2.0, that we talk about it saying that is not a solution. And if so, why we are continuing as a collective doing the same thing and the same thing and the same thing? That for me, it's the, really the question. And when I make the question in February, asking to the projects to hold these projects, what is working? I didn't assume that the certain things was working and not working. I just asked, please say me what is working in your projects. None of them say funding and finance. None of them. I don't have one case of that. And I noticed that all the conversations go saying that we have a trouble in that, in funding, and particularly funding in regenerative contexts. And another thing that I notice in the projects, it's just two of them talk about co-creation. That is a main thing in the society for Tonto. And just two or three of them has awareness in the center of, that is another characteristic of the society for Tonto. This is three examples of what I notice in the projects and, and the, 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 the characteristics that I notice in, in all this, uh, thing that is emerging and uh, it's why I when I talk with people and people say I'm designing an eco village that I know that has this uh, huge impact in, in a place in a, a thing and involves a lot of money I want to make these questions what is an eco village and what is the importance of the eco village in the context of this all these projects that I know that are uh, not that are fighting for resources and knowledge and experience. And I'm, I'm seeing that people are not co-creating. We have uh, just a few examples of that. And uh, for me, it's, it's why it is important to do these questions um, and to bring them to the center of the circle. And uh, yes, I pass to you, Gilles, and you go jump to the question, what is the importance of these things in the context of the innovations for the future and choose someone to pass. Thank you. Yeah, Marco, I, I, it was, was also uh, when you start raising the question and, and start talking, it also came to me about making the, the energy, uh, which is money, flow uh, uh, through who is doing also transformation and it's developing. And for me, it's not only the organizations and of course, and how the organizations then, when they receive this type of events, then who they hire and, and keeping the money uh, uh, circulating because we know that the, the more the money circulates in the projects 
uh, it, it brings abundance. And also at the other level about um, people, it will also allow several of us to really, to really connect to our essence and saying, what's my role on the transformation? Because if, if, if we start having abundance, then people start also acknowledging that, okay, I can really start now following my essence and, 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 and my role in this transformation because there is sufficient abundance. So I don't have to do a bit and then get the money elsewhere in the mainstream. So if we start creating these vortexes, several of us can also start having a more anchored, solid uh, income or flow of energy, allowing to even be more at service. So I'll, I'll put also at, at these two levels, we start creating a real ecology of projects, uh, energy flows, but also at the individual level, we can also start, um, let's say, cut the crap with the things that we, we do it because of money, but not fully aligned with our essence. And I pass on to Ivan. Um, I'm going to be a little bit radical, I think, in this series of the discussion and say that something in me says that we have to separate the concept of private property from, um, from the rest. Because I think when we come in, and there's a sense that I bought my stake, my apartment, my, my peace. You never can really get away from that because the only reason to keep that peace, that my, is that one day you're going to somehow monetize it. Somehow you're going to want to sell it. Somehow you're going to want to leave. And I think that in, inherently is a contradiction with the idea of creating community. Um, on the other hand, I understand that people make a wrong decision and they come in and then they need to have an ability to go out. I realize that people have children and they want to pass on their inheritance. But um, I think if we have people going into a project and uh, doing what the foundation uh, Terragora would like, which is that the land is freed. In other words, it doesn't belong to anybody. It cannot be sold again. And the people then start to focus on how do we take care of the nature? How do we, how do we, because I think fundamentally, if we're not focused on taking care of the nature, the environment in we, which we live, we will continuously come back to the conflicts that currently predominate in our interactions between each other. Thank you. And I pass to uh, Wahari. So, as I understood the question was, what is the importance of the eco-village movement? Or was a specific issues like money? Or was a general? What is the importance of the eco-village? Uh, the question is, what is the importance of the eco-village in the Innovations for the Future movement? And uh, with all the issues that the people that I bring, but also Gilles and uh, Flip and Ivan are bringing, and Nunu and Thierry, we, this is all, all on the table. It's, it's, just, it's not just a thing, it's, it's a complex thing. And, and, and you can yeah. go with your intuition and, and wisdom uh, with that. Thank yeah. you. Uh, thank you. So, it's, I feel it's really important, this movement that is rising of the eco village because it's so urgent that we create an alternative society, alternative world. And it's importance. I see it's important the money, but that's uh, to help for this transition movement. But the final goal is that we don't depend on the money system anymore. So, but to reach that point that we don't depend on the money system, we need to be able to produce all that we need or to be connected with projects that one produce another thing and another and others. So this network needs to be totally uh, sustainable. So uh, 
yeah, the money is important, but we need to work on making less and less dependent on the money system. So, but of course, we are very thankful for the money energy because it helps for the projects to evolve faster, so we become faster, uh, self-sustainable. So, investing in buying more land to make it free land, investing in structures for the sustainability to evolve. Uh, and the importance to be to getting back together because we were so brainwashed to be by oneself, by alone or individual way of living. So it needs a big healing of learning how to go together to a place and learn how to live together. So working on human relationships with how we solve conflicts that naturally arise, how we can tune visions because everyone has a different vision. So it's so important that we go into a, trying to tune to a, a common direction. So finding this common direction is it's challenging, but, but it needs the experience, needs the getting on the land together, getting practical, because those issues usually rise when we are living together. So, yeah, that has been an interesting challenge in the learnings. And, yeah, learning how we can live together. Uh, learning how we can think as a collective for a common goal. Learning how we can get more sustainable and less dependent on the outside system. But meanwhile, being thankful so the money energy can flow. Money, uh, and clarifying this private property or if it's collective and if it's I feel it's important to clarify if investors give money, how it is the, then it becomes the, if there are conflicts, how then they are solved. So this consensus decision making, or it's, uh, yeah, working on this, this, how decision making is done, it's also important issues to think about. So yeah, we are all evolving, learning projects, creating a new world. So challenging times and and very thankful for everyone to be a important part on this. So I think that's it for now. So I pass to uh, who is missing? No, no, as No, not yet. Yes. No, no. Like, Thank you, Wahari. Just a minute. We have 11 minutes for uh, five of us to talk, including you, Nuno. Okay? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for, for bringing that awareness, Marco. Yeah, for me, the, the, the answer to that question is, I, I think Innovations for the Future is an ecosystem of, I really consider it an ecosystem of co-evolving mutualism. So for me, it's a space to bring eco-villages as we know it's, it's going to be a trend in the future and, might, and it's an important shift because we know big concentrations of people that are not sustainable at all. So it has to, there has to be some shift in terms of dimension of, of human settlements. And I, wanna, I, I, want, I feel this makes a lot of sense as a space that we kind of drop down any dogmas and taboos and explore together these challenges and, and learn and evolve together. Uh, and, and create a space for, for eco-villages to evolve um, in the, as, as they go on their developmental path. There's a lot of challenges. I think one of the questions Philippe brought in that is kind of really critical for me is the relationship between people and place. And I, in the school I'm coming from, in the lineage, you cannot be regenerative uh, placeless. You know, you have regener to be regenerative, you have to be in a rela you have to acknowledge and work with your relationship with place. And I also think that it's important to, while we explore this together to keep in mind that 
we are working at different levels. We have work at that we cannot separate the individual level of human development with the collective level of development of teams and of people in, in, involved in the communities. And then the larger system, because we also have the, that kind of um, more macro, macro vision of, of the shift in society. And we are basically talking about a new, a new old way to relate or a convergence, new old ways to relate with people in place. And that's what drives me for. So I pass over, who hasn't talked yet? Thierry, uh, Rowan, Thierry. Philippe, and Matteo. Thank you. Yeah, Thierry, please. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, um, Marco, you put in a very important question. Uh, um, why does this money not, not go to uh, our kind of projects? I had an experience with this setting up an eco village in uh, a new town close to Amsterdam. And then I saw clearly, uh, it was really extreme, uh, but what happens uh, in, in a lot of places, basically, you know, a, a lot of the people in the, in the core team, they really had a, a, a strong aversion and allergy towards the, the, the system, the, the, the mainstream system. We worked with a, a social housing uh, association. The plan was that they would put in uh, 4 million euros to, to develop the whole uh, area. Uh, where where people could uh, could build houses, and every single meeting was uh, that I had that we had with uh, with the project manager of the housing association was a disaster. And there I could see, you know, you you really have to <laughs> to find a way yourself to um, if you you want to connect with this money. And I'm I'm sure it is there. You know, it, I've connected with, uh, with friends who work in big companies, there is awareness and there's also willingness to invest in, in new projects. They do see that it's easier outside of the mainstream system to do it. Uh, that, that town that I'm talking about is about 200,000 people. You know, they're setting up whole neighborhoods with the 10,000 people with uh, uh, sustainable infrastructure. Um, so somehow, we just i think we just have to dive in ourselves and and uh, heal our own frustration towards society and then we can connect and 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 really the miracles can happen you know the uh, european union is talking about uh, sustainable growth uh, you name it I, I don't have to go on uh, but you guys know what i mean uh, so that's that's me for now. And who can I pass on to? Um, did we have Brown, Philippe? Matteo and Philippe, yes. Uh, Philippe. Ah, yeah. Um, I would just like to comment very quickly that I, I completely resonate with what Ivan brought. Um, I normally, in my economic teaching, I bring a lot that the one of the core fun foundations of our current society is definitely private property and i feel that uh eco villages co-housing all these movements are an important piece of uh rethinking that and also rebalancing uh the comments rebalancing with collective property with common property so that's kind of one of the roles that these eco villages can play in the bigger system um also I'd like to bring the and i also put this I think a quote that I use quite a lot in my classes that is there. Um, I also like to bring the concept of the guilt. Uh, we use it quite a lot in, perm in permaculture to talk about uh, when we talk about the, the guilt and the function that the guilt has in terms of really promoting these kind of regenerative uh, practices. So I feel that what we're doing and what Zika villages can do is like is actually being part of that guilt. Um, and just to bring a, a, a metaphor, I remember that when we were trying to um, regenerate the land and the soil in the Bio Villa, uh, in this very eroded place, we, we tried different uh, strategies. And the one that worked the less was really just to randomly plant uh, trees, because single trees individuals in a very eroded land, they do nothing. And then we, we, sh we shifted the focus and we started to make islands of biodiversity where we put in a lot of uh, biomass, a lot of trees, and then we connected these islands with uh, mushrooms, with the mycelium and with the rotting, um, uh, rotting wood. And those islands connected with rotting wood really now are really 
kind of leverage a lot of regeneration. So when I think about eco-villages in these projects, I think about these kind of islands of regeneration that somehow will be connected and then they are the instruments of uh, overall regeneration for the entire ecosystem. So something on these lines. Uh, guild, yes, not guilt. I didn't did I say guilt. <laughs> no, a guild, a guild. Uh, definitely, it's a s small letter makes a big it's difference. It's a very slight <laughs> distinction, like hunger and <laughs> anger. The Italians have a problem with that. Or exactly. bitch, and, bitch and beach. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, definitely guilt. Let's not play the guilt now. Uh, I pass it on to Matteo. I think he's been silent for quite a long time. And uh, good to see you as well, Matteo. Thank you, Philip. Um, so I'm sorry, my connection is today is really crap. I keep going and coming in and out. And out. Uh, but if I understood, Malcolm, please refresh me the, the, the question so that I can be coherent with this. Matteo, the question is, what is the importance of the eco village in the innovation for the future, in, uh, in, uh, in the ecology? What can eco village do for the ecology? I think I answered this question already when I speak before, so maybe I need to repeat myself. And I, I can just uh, comment that I resonated a lot with what Ivan was sharing about, um, about the private property, that is important to really establish a different way, like exactly like as now are emerging, uh, are emerging this, this idea of, of sharing the car and therefore one doesn't need to own the car and take away all the burden of owning a car then in my my mind is like what is the next step for the houses or for the land where we don't need to own it but because the alternative of owning it is even better than owning itself yeah and in the last comment uh, i think nuno mentioned that uh, um, is is uh, unsustainable for a lot of humans to live together but it's also unsustainable to spread humans all over where at the moment there is uh, nature. So the, the, the point is, where do we find the balance where we can actually cluster humans to not having them occupying all the natural space and leave wild space just for the wildlife, where humans can enter only for acupunctural uh, work, like only trained people entering this wild rain. So that's for me another element that should be considered because uh, Often eco villagers don't have the space enough to actually dedicate a space only for the wild, but I think it's really important to include that. That's me. Thank you, Matteo. I think you passed to Brown, I suppose. It's the last person. You suppose correctly. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Matteo. Thanks, Marco. Sure. Well, I've just got big thumbs up for both the eco village and for. Um, innovations for the future. I just think they're both absolutely critical um, and that the whole, as someone mentioned, the trend of the future and people and place connecting those two and just to enrich it with more awareness um, and the importance of co-creation with the richness of, of uh, innovations for the future and offering the diversity of sharing. So um, my heart is warm and beating and very happy to be here and thankful. Back to Marco. Thank you, Brown. Thank you all for the sharings, for the wisdom that you brought to this, the circle. Ah, a lot of happens inside me during this last hour and a half, almost hour and a half. And for me, it's time for a checkout. And as a checkout, I'd like us to really bring uh, what was precious to us here, what, what really touched us, what was the insight or the perspective that you have that is new after this conversation. We have more or less 30 seconds as uh, average for each one of them. We are nine and we have five minutes. And I'd like to honor the time. Uh, at and I can start saying that for me, it was very precious to see the diversity, the, 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 sc the open scope of this question. At the same time, the, 
how I loved the, the image that Flip brought us with this diversity island of diversity and after the Micelio connecting all that. I, I love that. I love that image. Thank you for that. It, it landed on me. And I pass to uh, Nunu. I just uh, love the the quality of, of the dialogue we have together and, and building on each other's uh, reflection so I've, I, get, I live with a sense of deepening and, and more connection and long for the further evolution of, of us together so thank you everybody deeply grateful and I pass over to my neighbor Wahari Uh, the, the essence uh, that was uh, that I was feeling was the interlinking all the diversity and interlinking all the possibilities. So this interconnection and interlinking. So. Thank you all for bringing all this beautiful diversity and possibilities. And I pass to Flip. Uh, yeah, I think um, I have to confess that the most important thing for me actually was to see you all uh, and just to be here in this space um, and just to start these conversations. It's the first time that I actually uh, join and I hope to join more often. Um, I feel always the hunger to have more time and to just to do it around the, as, as somebody said, the dinner table with a nice fire shirt and a glass of wine. Uh, that's what I miss the most. So I hope we, may, we can make it sooner or later and just uh, sending you warm embraces and a happy Father's Day to everyone. Cheers. And I pass it on, sorry, to Ivan. Well, it's, um, it's really nice to feel this uh, micelio, this connection that we're all making in many different levels with each other. Thank you all for contributing. And um, yeah, I, I, I often remember in relationships, <laughs> reminding myself, it's not what you say, it's what you do. So um, when I hear this word echo villages, I think what I take from today, it really, it's just a word. What's really going to matter is that we do something beautiful with it and around it. And I pass to Bronwyn. Thank you. Well, joy, joy, absolute joy and um, joy to meet people and be connected to a precious place, Portugal. And I pass to Thierry. Thank you. Yeah, for me, that's, um, I feel the, the, the passion uh, of everybody very strongly. That uh, makes me really happy. Um, I see also the diversity of, uh, of like the expertise of people and the viewpoints that really helps. And I, I also sense a bit of uh, uh, humility, you know, not knowing all the answers. And, you know, I always get in trouble when I think I know it. <laughs> so I think that's the first ingredient to get to real solutions and, and really make it happen. So I'm, I'm really excited and we're going to do it. We are doing it. Thank you. And I pass on to Jill. Hey, hey. Um, thank you so much. I, yeah, I, what I take, it's, it's three things. I, I, a lot of the dedication uh, that, uh, that I feel in all of you. The, the commitment more than the ded dedication and the presence. I take also this, uh, what you brought, uh, uh, Marco, in your first statement about why this is important for us to really start creating the ecology and the economy of the new. And, and also this, uh, the image that uh, Philippe brought. For me, the, the, guild, the guild image is really powerful. And, and for me, it, it, it holds and manifests what are probably also type of uh, a feeling what guild do we want to create so these these events this capacity whatever start creating a vortex that then can can support others and i pass on to mateo 
Thank you, Jill. I turn on the video. Let's see if it doesn't collapse. I'm really happy to connect with many of you and, uh, and uh, I mean, with all of you actually, and feel that I'm part of, uh, of a strong movement of, like Jill said, committed people. And uh, I'm just looking forward for the next steps when we can meet in person and put something on paper and start making the steps, concrete steps. Damn, maybe what Harry did ago? I'm not sure. No, we all did. We all did. Thank you. Oh, wow. Awesome. Thank you. It's 11.31. Thank you for uh, helping me to go for the time, the correct time. And I send you a big hug to each one of you. Thank you. Muito mm -hmm. obrigada. Alegria. Adeus. Bom fim de semana. Bom dia do pai mais uma vez. Tchau, tchau. Tchau.